Shalom, and welcome to an observation about Russia's Victory Day. My name is Daniel, and I'm wearing the Lion of Zion on my hat. I am a proud Michigander, University of Michigan, and uh, but our roaring Lion of Zion is roaring louder than ever before that NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, that NATO always will be um, a blessing for this world because it is a defense shield for the might of right. Just as World War II, you had your Axis and you had your allies, and again, the Allies are the ones who are on the side of right, inevitably, obviously, for anyone who has eyes to see. So, welcome and uh, love from love, our Prince of Peace, hope from hope. His hope springs eternal, and peace from that Prince of Peace. And um, know that when... NATO was first founded in 19, 1949, there were 12 founding nations. Now in this hour of, of Christ's power in this world, now there are 30 nations. And now Finland and Sweden are poised by way of having signed a treaty with Boris Johnson in the United Kingdom. Uh, Sweden has the backing of Great Britain if there were to be any, any trouble. It'd make it a lot easier for Sweden and uh, Finland to join NATO. And as uh, the Finnish president spoke, he said, he addressed Putin and he said, you caused this. You caused this. The very thing, the reason why he's gone to war was to stop NATO from growing around him. And now it's growing <laughs> all around him. So the very thing that he started the war over, the reason, therefore, was to stalemate NATO this is blowing up in his face. And for that reason, Putin, as a uh, defeated person, he is very, very dangerous. He is fully capable of pressing the red buttons. And so in this hour, it's time to celebrate God's mercy more than ever. Uh, be fear not, because all prophecy has been told not to tell the future, but to change the future. And God's mercy shall endure forever. And know therefore that Christ the Lord said in Matthew 24, 22, that unless these days were cut short, no flesh could survive. And for that reason, I have found no less than four prophecies of the king of the north, a Russia uh, being assassinated. So pray for him that he doesn't have to come to that end, that he would just repent of his insanity. So know that the word of God's heaven-sent race of love's great commission has been slowed down to a crawl all over the circle of the globe because people have wrongly not seen the gospel's purest message of spiritual equality that is in the Bible, clearly written within Jeremiah 31's Kingdom Age Covenant for all people. And until uh, obsolete religion, as Hebrews 8 foretold, until it is replaced by loving spirituality, the distortional understandings of love easily... Uh, easily divide the false weeds from growing with the wheat. And for that reason, Christ, our, our Messiah, returning soon, he foresaw that the two would come to a place, uh, the wheat and the tares, uh, where differing morality uh, between the forces of good and bad, right and wrong, 
uh, would make it impossible, utterly impossible, uh, for those of Russia's hatred to ever grow together again with those who will lift up love as the Lord God of all people, great and small, as he has always been. For that reason, our Lord declares, I am the Lord God of all mankind. And so it is time in this hour to be like the fiber optic um, lights illuminating his wonder, illuminating his light, uh, so that it might be as, as a rainbow, uh, so that we might go towards the light that he sends us. And uh, so understand that within these days of our Prince of Peace's great time in time preparation of his kingdom age peace, he is finally pouring out Malachi 4's refiner's fires of transformation over absolutely all people that's living on this little blue dot called the earth. For I tell you, the refiner's fire people, it is uh, COVID, the trial of all flesh, which has come to bring God's word of patience to keep us from the hour of the temptation, not to change Revelation 3's end time prophecy. And the refiner's fire, heat, and days that are burning as an oven is coming from World War III's World War Z. And these are therefore days of change's absolute necessity for our survival. If we do not beat our sword into the sickle, we will be no more. So we must learn the ways of war no more. Uh, and so it has come to pass when our world's newest Vlad the Impaler, uh, when he cut the world to a brand new big one, he has made Russia into the sphincter thereof, into the asshole of the earth. And so it came about uh, that it is now real easy for the wise to sense in the spirit that there are now over 50 million victims of World War II's, uh, Hitler's Nazism, uh, that are all now cursing uh, R Russia's monster of monsters, Putin, uh, from out of our great beyond in the spirit. Since that Antichrist wannabe shamelessly began imitating Adolf Hitler uh, in every sickening way uh, befitting of all those loving genocide. But due to religious people embracing, this is the root of our problem, uh, because there's a false Christ in this world. Uh, people like Putin, they go to church every week now, but he's no Christian people, be not fooled. Uh, be in due to religious people embracing some real terrible tunnel vision. During the entire church age, uh, I can tell you honestly, thus saith uh, Daniel of Windsor uh, by the spirit of prophecy, our world's biggest problem really has always been with Pharisee wannabes uh, who are wrongly uh, embracing spiritual racism uh, and uh, embracing um, a reality that does not even exist uh, of inequality between all people on many levels. We are all made exactly in God's image. And uh, the truth is, none are uh, above the other in, in the Lord God's seeing. He loves all of us identically. And nor is there any doubt that such backwards thinking that is otherwise within traditional world's religions is far behind all those who are daring to think outside of wisdom proverbial boxes by the light of love. And it is love that all roads of love lead towards Christ. And know that for that reason, the so-called loveless Christians like Vladimir Putin, he embraces ignorant delusions of grandeur. But instead of that, instead uh, of that biblical antichrist of Daniel 11, 11's king of the north, instead of him clearly seeing that he's in last place reality, 
uh, he doesn't see himself in last place. He sees himself really in front of everybody else. And it is totally not true. And so that KGB dictator is daring to think that he's far ahead of the world and instead of really being in the last place uh, because he has let his desensitized heart uh, to die within him, uh, not having any humanity left within him. And it came about on Russia's recent Victory Day that in a separate message marking May 9th, which is that day, President Vladimir Zelensky said that Nazis were expelled from his country in 1945. And he stressed that Ukraine would definitely not allow anyone to annex that victory in his words. And he said very soon Ukraine would have two victory days to celebrate uh, as defeated Russians join the other Nazi losers and get to the back of the line where they belong. And for this cause, the full weight of God's overflowing wrath is has been standing against Vladimir Putin, especially on Russia's victory day of their brainless march of utter defeat towards the bloodiest gates of death, death's most hellish suicidal hell, all ablaze, brought unto earth by a hellish man with uh, who thinks he has a deluded heavenly cause. And due to our Creator's favor overflowing with Ukraine and the NATO alliance, all of these people of NATO belonging to all 30 countries of NATO, uh, they can all stand together knowing that God has NATO's back. Thus saith the Lord God Almighty. And uh, for that reason, all people uh, on the side of right uh, will seemingly not ever need to fight in any battles that might lie ahead, since they have already been won in the spirits before any engagements possibly could come forth. And as it is written, millions of Ukrainians have now discovered that there is a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace that shall be brought forth very soon by our soon returning Prince of Peace alone. But until such happens, the Ukrainian NATO supported army, which in a sense, he keeps saying it's a proxy war. It is. Uh, but they, on the side of right NATO forces and Ukrainian together, working together as one, unified, uh, they shall be like warriors uh, in battling, um, in battle, fearless shall they be trampling their enemy into the mud of their own lovelessness and they will fight with might for the rightest right imagine because the Lord is with them and they will put their Russian oppressors uh, to shame big time and by the Lord's spirit of prophecy all wise souls opposed to World War Z's Russian bare vision of Daniel 7, 5, exploding all over Europe, uh, better beware because it is written that the great bear would arise and he would be chewing on three ribs when he hears uh, that uh, he may go eat all the flesh that he would like now. And those ribs are Crimea, Donetsk, and Luhansk. And so we better stand unified so that we may overcome uh, and so in this day, everyone that's wanting this war to be cut short, like the Bible says, uh, we can all find some real special comfort as we will embrace the truth of the Lord's faithfulness within our faith, uh, within our faith of love and trust. Uh, let it be put in motion. Lose not sleep over this war people we should be anxious for nothing and in all things even throughout this let us celebrate the victories that are yet to uh, come um, and only then could people have a lot of brand new kingdom age hopes so that all people can finally come to inherit world peace as it is so 
clearly foretold in scriptures. Uh, the word of God says that it shall be like Eden ahead of us. Isaiah 61 says that money from all over all the world is going to flow in like an ocean and fix these, this world. It'll be the days of the great restoration of Acts 3.21, the, the great regeneration, the great restitution, the great renovation of our carpenter of the ages who has dropped his plumb line of love so that we can all have straight walls. And as such expectant people of peace stand firm and hold, hold their positions tight, they'll soon be able to see that our carpenter of the ages, they'll be able to see his salvation uh, on their behalf. But that shall not just be spiritual, it shall also be physical salvation, for he's going to save this planet from the total uh, oblivion of Zephaniah 1.1, where there would be no birds, no fish, no man mankind left on the planet otherwise. Isaiah 24, this earth in pieces uh, never rise again. For in cutting these days short, just as Nineveh was not destroyed, and Jonah 4 says that God changed his mind and relented in the same way, it does not have to happen uh, in Zechariah that the eyes will be consumed away in the sockets, the tongues consumed away in their mouths, and their flesh consumed away by thermonuclear war uh, at Armageddon. It does not have to happen. And know that our Ancient of Days is even now moving fiercely against all followers of Putin's lovelessness. And there's absolutely no doubt that he who is the beloved, the blessed, and the adored, uh, he shall also be with all believers due to his everlasting mercy. And when I say believers, I'm talking about people, believers in love. Love shall always win and love will win out here. Thus saith the Lord God Almighty, because his love always shall endure forever and ever. And as the world looked upon Russia's Victory Day parade, uh, those people were proudly towing uh, their biggest newts all through uh, Red Square. But what really made me want to upchuck personally, says Daniel, is the fact they had a bunch of little kids dressed as tanks and dressed as World uh, Z's covering them. And some kids were bombs, and it was like reminiscent of the pictures I've seen of uh, Hitler's youth, uh, indoctrination of the masses starting in kindergarten, and that turned my stomach more than the nukes in the square. And uh, yesterday when this happened, thousands of those loyalists all covering that red square that is red with the blood of thousands of Ukrainians. And praise God, uh, Putin's speech was hijacked and over the state um, television came the words, the blood of thousands of Ukrainians are all over your hands. Praise God. And uh, But the loyalists, <laughs> they were all aglow with horrible fanaticism. And it was a really sad sight to behold such a multitude of brainwashed people cheering for that murderous, cold-blooded killer. Thus saith the Lord God, they must awake and arise. For the prophecy of Gregory Rasputin was true. The cat is chasing the rat. The rat will become mice, and then the mice will turn and eat the cat and but it comes with belief and prophecy and nor is there any doubts whatsoever that many spectators to Russia's most insane victory day mockery which is really all that was going on there uh, it felt like they were losing people like me were I, I felt like I was losing my breakfast since the deaths uh, the despicable deaths of more than 20,000 people just in Mariupol alone, which they're still ruthlessly, barbarically. Uh, these people don't even have no food. They have no charity, no mercy at all. Uh, they were also celebrating uh, this, this, this gross indecency of inhuman, man's inhumanity towards man. And uh, that Russian president spoke as though uh, everything was a good thing that he was doing. 
And as that parade of hatred's greatest vanity was then televised, the blood of the Ukrainian martyrs really was overflowing in the spirit like some real tainted glory of evil's most horrible horrors, which were birthed from out of the iciest stone-cold hearts imaginable. For Vladimir Putin's religion is only a loveless one, since he has been working really hard at committing blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, the unforgivable sin by letting all of his love light to go right out of his ass. Nor is there any doubt uh, that the day of Putin's foretold assassination is close at hand. And when he stands before the real Jesus Christ Almighty, who can never forgive that loveless, unforgivable sin, it shall be absolutely no surprise that Vladimir shall be told that uh, by his Lord of love that he never knew him due to the eclipse of his darkest soul. And for this reason, the Lord our God shall never fight against loving souls. Those who walk with the Spirit, there is no condemnation. And for that majesty of majesty, he always gives victory unto all those fighting right for his, his own love's greatest might. For his very own righteousness always brings forth the most blissful kind of heaven-sent peace that will evermore go far beyond all past misunderstandings or understandings of any spiritual truth. And when that dictator of the brainwashed addressed his, his foolish people uh, with that had their ears up like they were aliens from Mars, uh, the world's greasiest demons began laughing as, as he opened his mouth. Uh, as that madman of uh, Moscow declared World War II's anniversary of the Kremlin's victory over Nazism. For even the world's darkest Kremlins all know very well that there's absolutely no difference at all between Putin and Adolf. To think otherwise is a purest joke, since the armies they have both been commanding have both committed the same shame of genocide. And when that KGB last czar addressed his brown-nosing nation in the spirit, he was shamelessly cramming a lots of shitty Russian propaganda right down the throats of his most uh, foolish uh, loyalists. And that king of the north from Daniel 11's end time manifested prophecy. Then he emphasized that Hitler's reckless adventure in World War II became a really tough le lesson that uh, affected almost 80% of the world's people. But the truth that he did not elaborate upon is the truth that for absolutely all Russians, the only victory in these days of his World War III's World War Z that, uh, that could leave them without any regret, the only thing that could leave them without regret, the only thing uh, would be that they would lose their ignorance over Vladimir Putin's propaganda machine since victory is only possible for all Russians if they realize all evidence is screaming out that they must all stop fighting for their criminally insane leader who can't wait to push his dastardly little red buttons almost as much as he can't wait to go jack off because that's all that guy is is just a big jack off. Uh, and that most hated pariah of pariahs is now daring to stand under the upset wrath of our almighty God, even though the full weight of love stands against his unchristian murderous hatefulness. And as Daniel 11's king of the north foretold uh, that antichrist of the book of Revelation, he shall keep in insisting that his special operation has been successful in spite of the really clear truth that he's already lost his war, which easily makes him the biggest Russian loser that ever lost anything worth losing all of his people's respect, all of his people's uh, affection. The only reason they're holding on to the guy is because they're afraid that he'll off them. 
and now the camouflage last czar of Russia, uh, he will never admit that the only true way for anyone in his newly envisioned USSR to have the truest kind of victory is for them to finally begin recognizing the real enemy who is actually him right underneath their noses because it is obvious to anyone with half a brain or less uh, that he is a defiled leader of war's cruelest abominations. And But that king of utter disgrace is no dummy though. For he also understands that when a war is being won, a leader doesn't really need to say much about it. But if they are losing like he's been, he's smart enough to also realize that he should be saying even less than nothing. Uh, and all that he does say is just poppycock and everybody knows it's utter nonsense. But to all those listening to his ridiculous victory speech, everyone saw him being pretty tight-lipped as he assured all stupid people under his iron-handed rule that he's really winning a war uh, that he and Russia has already lost. Russia will not even accept the, the Russian dead. Uh, their last statistics are there's still only been a thousand people killed, even though the reality is 25,000 Russians, according to Ukrainian numbers. I trust the Ukrainian numbers a little bit more than the 1,000 dead of the Russian numbers because the Russians are just full of uh, Putin shit. Uh, and so all that he has left is the deflated morale of thousands of troops burning out. The revolution of the Russians shall begin. And as the world listened to that madman of Moscow, uh, he said that he was liberating the oppressed Russian people from neo-Nazism of Ukrainian, which is a real joke, especially since Zelensky is Jewish. <laughs> So it came to pass that all non-ignorant people daring to believe in the bloody mission of that dictator of dictators with open hearts, don't do it, because everyone that dares to do it, they will be walking the terribly unloving ro road of blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And such loveless people of twisted, sick values shall end up seeing them perishing everlastingly if they keep refusing to open up their spiritual eyes so that they can finally see that love's total lack of light is all over Vladimir Putin's inhumane actions from his command. Woe unto those remaining in the darkness of Putin's hatefulness, uh, for they shall sadly inherit the gross darkness of, from where there shall be much weeping and gnashing of teeth. For the truest truth of our self-created uh, hells upon earth is that all unloving actions are 100% anti-Christ, exactly as Putin is. He is the biblical anti-Christ. But praise God, he shall be overcome. And in the same way that prophecy is conditional, so too has it been right on time. And in the latter days, God swore that he would be the Lord God of Israel. It says so, Jeremiah 31.1. And so in this hour, because his covenant has been written for all people, he says to all loving people of Russia, all loving people of Ukraine, brothers of other mothers, he says, I will be your God. You will be my people. I will forgive all your iniquity. I will never remember it. I will write my law and my love upon your hearts. And beyond that, not, none of you shall ever need to even be taught of me. For all people of love shall know me. Uh, because I am love. Those who love are born again of me. And know me because I am love, says the Lord God. And so in this hour, it's time to rejoice because the days of the Antichrist one shall be cut short and suddenly he will be found not just as Daniel 11 straight out says.